Now, for children who have just started back at school, the thought of returning as an adult is the furthest thing from their mind. Mm. But one woman in Rochdale has done just that. And when Elaine Hibbert arrived back at Holland Primary, she realised she had quite a bit of homework to do. Holland Primary School in Rochdale is opening for the new school year. And for head teacher Elaine Hibbert, this school means much more than just bricks and mortar. Morning! Elaine first walked through the school gates of the original school in 1959, when skirts were below the knee and teachers still used chalkboards. Morning, Adele. I can remember coming into school right in the first two classes, and as a twin, my sister was put in the opposite class. I mean, I can still remember the smell of the block paints that you used to have on a Friday afternoon. Can we have everybody into assembly, please? Despite Elaine's fond memories of a good school, time has not been kind to Holland Primary, rebuilt five years ago. Ofsted put it on the government's list of failing schools. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so pleased to see you all back into school. So, in 2010, when Elaine found out that a school that means so much to her was struggling and in need of a new head teacher, she couldn't resist. When the job became available, I knew I just had to fight to get it. The school had been attacked by Ofsted inspectors for inadequate teaching, poor leadership and erratic attendance. Holin had been without a permanent head for two years. This community primary school needed a miracle. The first thing that I had to do was to improve teaching. If a child hasn't made progress, why? Don't accept, well, it's just because they haven't come to school. Well, let's do something about it. Don't accept it's because they don't read at home. Do something about it. It sounds like you make your teachers work harder than other teachers. Some of the teachers that you inherit when you take over failing school will say, you're a hard taskmaster. We didn't used to do that before. My answer to that is I don't dwell in the past. When she first got here, though, not all of the staff agreed with Elaine's new ideas. Once she'd laid out her plans, nearly half her teachers left. Next, Elaine had to tackle poor attendance, which wouldn't be easy. Bye-bye, you're all coming back tomorrow. Every time a child is off, phone call home. If that phone call tells me that they, they, they're struggling to get the children in, they won't get dressed or they won't eat the breakfast, then I either chat to them a minute they come back into school and say, this is ridiculous, or I'll get in the car and I'll go and knock on a door and You're say, I've them. come for them. Yes. You actually go and pick them up? I go and pick them up, yeah. Is that going a little bit above and beyond the call of a head teacher? Not, not at all. In previous years, I've actually gone, um, they've come in, on, in the pyjamas and they've got dressed in school. Elaine's a bit of a dab hand when it comes to turning around failing schools fast. This is the third in less than ten years. You're going to do your best. When we had a, our first kind of one-to-one -one meeting with her, the last thing she said, she said is, we're going to hit the ground running. And I think that's what she's really good at, is she leaves under no illusions as to, as to how, you, how hard you're going to work. She definitely gave across the idea that she was someone you wanted to get on the right side of. Yeah. Um, and being on the wrong side of it might not be so good. I likened her to a football manager in a way. They're brought in when teams are struggling, just as this school was, and again, brought in key players, you know, just like a manager would. <laughs> Elaine's skills haven't gone unnoticed. She's frequently asked to visit other struggling schools in the area, offering advice and support. Now, Elaine and her team might have managed to impress the Ofsted inspectors, but what do her toughest critics actually think about her? She's quite strict, but that's good. When we do, like, really bad stuff and we have to go to Miss Hibbert, it, like, teaches us a lesson and um, she knows that we won't do it again because she's, like, strict. So have you ever been sent we... to Miss Hibbert's office? No. <gasps> I don't think so. What kind of standard of work does Mrs Hibbert expect? Outstanding. So, at the end of the first day of a new term, and after two years on the job, the results speak for themselves. Before Elaine arrived, less than 40% of Key Stage 2 children achieved their expected level in English and Maths. This year, there was a 100% pass rate. And Ofsted are going to hope the same dramatic turnaround can happen at the remaining 451 schools in England that are still causing concern. Thanks. See you tomorrow. My mantra, if we're talking about mantras, is would I send my own child to this school? Would you? Yes. 
definitely. Well, Elaine joins us now. 100% pass rate in English and maths is incredible. But I suppose it helps to have the parents on side, doesn't it? I mean, how have you improved then the relationship between parents and the school? Very slowly, softly, softly, by inviting them into school initially for some fun activities. I remember the very first activity that we had was a meat and potato junk <laughs> modelling evening. What and the, the, chil really? the children couldn't get near the junk modelling material for parents making spaceships and theme parks. Yeah. We've yeah. also. We Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> it, it was, and it brought those parents into school. Many of them that had had bad experiences themselves brought them to... back through yeah. into school. Yeah. We've had huge bouncy castles where parents have got onto the bouncy castle and learnt how important teamwork is to yeah, get yeah. themselves over. Um, and we also have demonstration lessons. One of the first things parents said to me when I arrived in school was, Mrs Hibbert, we don't know how modern mathematics is taught, for example. Mm. You don't add up like we used to. You don't divide like we used to. Yeah, yeah. So we invite parents to come in and watch us teach those lessons. Yeah, Fiona, you were nodding along with it. It's I that was. thing, isn't it, of saying, how, how do the school well, teach the... Well, the maths the, yeah. thing, I've got to tell you, is, is a complete sort of torment with my 10-year-old. My 14-year-old don't bother trying to help me anymore. <laughs> my 10-year-old yeah. uh, is not great after... And also, because so much of it is... is I'm, I, was, I learnt to do maths by writing it all down. Mm. And showing your workings out, and so much is in the in the heads mm -hmm. now, isn't it? So yes, completely it's different. practical. Yeah. You do you do these little graduation things as well, don't you? Yes. On a Friday, just on a Friday, matter. we've always had the golden book where children have been celebrated, but now we've revamped it, and we have junior graduates. So every Friday, a child's chosen from every class, and he ha the the child has the the mortarboard and the cape and they enter the school hall where parents are present and they graduate, they end up with, with the graduation certificate. Yeah. That raises self-esteem mm, so much. They're aspiring to go on to university now yeah. and parents want them to go on as well. Brilliant. Well, yeah, You've done an excellent job. And, of course, to everyone at the school as well, because yes, obviously they yeah. had to do the work as well. Yes. Enjoy the new Well term. done, children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and staff. <Now. laughs> yeah. And everybody, everybody involved. <laughs> and the parents.